Call to action. What are the characteristics of a call to action? Again, it should be simple to understand and remember because you want your audience to remember it a week, two weeks after your presentation. Remember, your audience is going to remember very, very little of your presentation. No matter how good it is, people remember a small percentage of what they listen to. But if you can get them to remember these key sentences, these key ideas, you've been successful. Again, it should be a complete sentence, subject, object, verb. It should be actionable, so it should have an action verb. You need to implement this, you need to buy this, you need to investigate this, you need to read my paper. So it has an action verb. Oops. It should have you in the sentence. You should read my paper. You should buy this. Why is that important? Because if you say, people in the networking industry need to read my paper, that's too general, it isn't speaking to me personally. Uh, people in Barcelona need to think about this. Uh, Telefonica executives need to think about this. No, Tell, uh, you need to read my research paper on, the te on networking. It should have two parts, call to action. There is the short term and the long term. For example, if you're giving a paper at a conference or if you're making a presentation at a conference, the short term could be, please go to my website, download my paper and read it. That's a short term call to action. I can do it in 10, 15 minutes when I go to the office. A long term call to action is the big idea behind your presentation. Network, you need to change your uh, whole networking system to adapt to the changes next year. That's a project that's going to take me a long time. So that's a long term project. So your call to action has two parts. And again, specific to your audience. 